I have a penchant for unintentionally destroying Robovax. I don't do it on purpose. I'm just an idiot. Oh, I'm so sorry, 360 Robovac. <laughs> oh, God. Why? Today's video is a review of the EasyViz RS2, and this thing has two very cool tricks up its sleeve, which we'll get to later. As usual, I'll be pitting this robot against an assault course filled with dog turds and beer cans, but through trial and error, I've learned that feeding Robovax sugar and flour just turns them into giant cakes. So this week, I'm going savory. Will this help? Spoiler alert, probably not. Thanks to EasyViz for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their EasyViz RS2 Robovac and base station. This is another self-emptying, self-cleaning robot with a twist. The RS2 is a dual mop pad design vac and mop robot with 4,000 pascals of suction power, and it has some of the best obstacle avoidance detection I've seen on any robot to date. It has support for both Amazon Alexa and Google Home, so you can use your voice. Alexa. Clean the floors, slave. Sure thing. I assume you've stupidly thrown sugar all over the floor again showing off. Would you like me to fetch some toilet paper? Last time your wife yelled at you and you shit yourself. Didn't. Other smart home technology includes scheduling of the robot to have it run automatically by time of day, but also scheduling for off-peak charging, which saves you money on your electricity bill. The app has all the usual features you'd expect from a Robovac in this price bracket. LiDAR mapping, scheduling, various suction and mopping modes, no-go areas and invisible walls, and of course, the ability to add multiple maps if you have a multi-story building. Question is, is it actually any good? Is that a good way to lead into the next section? Was that professional? Get to the point. As well as having some of the best 3D laser obstacle avoidance that I've seen on any Robovac so far, the RS2 also has remote control functionality, so you can drive it about your house when you're away on holiday for example, which is super cool. But this is where it gets nuts, right? This thing can be sent on a regular scheduled security patrol. It actually has a patrol mode where it'll go around your house on a schedule looking for bad guys, like some kind of 80s TV show about a boy and his robot. Because EasyViz specialise in security cameras, the robot can identify humans and send you warning notifications. That's insane! But whilst it's on this patrol, it can also film your pets. We can detect a cat or a dog and film them so you can enjoy them later on, on video. It's, um, patrols for cats. Some might call this a pussy patrol. No! Hello! Yes, YouTube! This week it's a pussy patrol! I'm going to have to explain to my little darlings what that means now! Well, yeah. Yes, I suppose I could tell them it's a patrol for cats. It's a patrol. It's a patrol for cats. Yes, fine, I'll call back next week. Disgusting! From a cleanliness perspective, it utilizes a counter-rotating roller brush to reduce pet hair entanglement. Its base station not only cleans the mop pads, but also air dries them too. And as you would expect from a Robovac with a dock, it automatically empties and refills the robot with clean water. For object avoidance, the robot itself is apparently using an embedded AI RGB camera and D to F 3D structured laser navigation for route planning. At 3K, the onboard security camera is probably the best security camera I currently have in this house, which is bizarre that it's on a vacuum. 
All video is recorded to its onboard storage, which can store six to eight hours before it overwrites the earliest data, and it uses AES-128 data encryption to keep your footage safe. If however you don't like the idea of a camera because you're the tinfoil hat type, then there is a sticker that can be used to hide the lens, and this can be washed and reused. But I think one of my favourite things about this dock is the fact that it's actually got a touch screen on the top of it, and this thing can be used to start the vacuum for all the different modes, and also has a child lock in the app in case you have annoying kids. And finally, and this is probably the most incredible thing of all, all Robovac manufacturers are trying to solve this problem. When you reach carpet, what do you do with the mop? You, you don't want to drag it across the carpet because it will drench it. So the J7 Plus from iRobots does this really cool thing where it puts it on its back, which is probably one of the coolest things I have ever seen. The Roborocks all kind of like lift the pad off the floor a little bit, which is great unless you have really thick pile carpets. This vacuum just leaves the mop in the dock. It vacuums the house first, right? Goes around the house, does its vacuuming, and then it goes back to the dock and picks its mop pads up, and then goes and mops the individual areas that need mopping. This is utterly ingenious and a great way of solving this problem, with one drawback, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to let you know that Without you guys, there is no channel. I don't, I do, I do this for a living, and without you guys, there is no living. If you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and ding that bell if you haven't already, it would mean a lot to me. Thank you. On with the show. The mopping function is awesome. Its spinny pad design is something I haven't tried before now, and I think it's probably my favorite way of tackling this problem so far. And it seems to actually do an incredible job, even when given an utterly ridiculous challenge. God, it looks like there's been a murder. Hey, that's excellent. That's very, very good. Mopping completed. The robot goes in sensible patterns, and it uses more water than any of my previous robots does, and between that and its spinny pad design, I think it might be my favourite so far for this purpose. And after the soy sauce incident, the pads were utterly grim, and so I sent it to clean itself, fully expecting the pads to still be a muddy brown colour. But I was wrong. Check this out. Oh, what? Okay, I am surprised by that. Look how clean they are! That's mental. I started out with salt as my initial test and then quickly realized I'd got nothing to compare it to if I did that. So I I got the flour back out. Oh, you, you know what I'm starting to realize is I'm not testing Robovax, I'm ending my marriage. And so I carefully poured out the same amount of flour that I'd used in my previous tests for Roborock to see whether a vacuum that's 500 pound cheaper could compete. And it does. Sure, it's missed bits, but all Robovacs do when you throw that much flour at them, that's normal. That's, um, that's impressive. That is definitely better than I remember the Roborock being. So bear in mind, before I show you just how much this thing picked up, the Roborock picked up 24 grams of the 27 grams of flour that I threw down. So these results were quite annoying. So it actually ticked over to 24 for a split second and then went back to 23. And I'm trying to squeeze every tiny bloody bit out of it. Come on! I did it! <laughs> I found some dust in this! Ladies and gentlemen, Robovac fans, welcome back to Robovac Assault Course. Our challenges today, as usual, facing the giant turd. Gentlemen, please start your engines. And they're off! Roborock in the lead! Already looking dangerously close to those cans as she tries to find a position in the room. Easy Biz just chilling, chilling in the dark for some reason. <laughs> Roborock has lost its position but is starting a new clean. She's already touched a beer can and she's touched the cans. Oh, she's all over those cans. Does not give a toss. Oh, and Easy Biz is out of the dock. Oh, headed off with the pass. Roborock's having none of it. 
And Roborox hit another beer can. And again! I have never seen Roborock hit so many cans! Avoiding the next one. Easy Biz does not know what to do. And Roborock edges towards the finish line. This is looking like an upset. Easy Biz is just spinning around and she's off! Roborock avoiding the shoe of doom. Easy Biz now on her way, neatly avoiding the cans. Look at that! Oh, that is excellent avoidance. Roborock is technically finished, but she's scored a lot of points. Easy Biz now waiting to finish, has avoided every obstacle so far absolutely masterfully. She might just win on points alone as he heads towards the line and crosses it! I think I'm afraid that's an Easy Viz victory because she hasn't touched a thing. Look at that! That's impressive. And now for the elephant in the elephant in the room. The RS2 dock has a water compartment for clean water and a water compartment for dirty water. It doesn't have a waste disposal bin for emptying the robot of waste. This is unusual for a Robovac in this category, but I think they have done it to keep costs down. You will probably only have to empty the waste bin once a month anyway, so it makes sense they have cut this particular corner instead of cutting the corner of not including water. The water functionality for mopping for me is a bigger deal than the waste bin is because the waste bin needs emptying less often. The J7 Plus has gone in the opposite direction and I felt that was a mistake. There is also the silver lining here that you don't have to replace any dust bags. If you do spend the extra money and go for the Robo Rock, Sure, it's got more functionality when it comes to emptying itself, but you will have to have the added expense of the dustbin bags on top. I did also mention that there's a drawback to its mopping system. If you have a house that goes hardwood floor, carpet, hardwood floor, then to get to that hardwood floor with its mop, it's going to have to take its mop across the carpet. I'm not sure how it's going to do that, there's no way that it could go and mop that wait for the mop to dry to take it across your carpet to get back again. Your carpet is going to get wet, and that's obviously a consideration if your house is laid out that way. And finally, if you have pets, this might not be the RoboVac for you currently. And I want to stress currently, because this might improve with a firmware update in the near future because it's all based on AI, and a firmware update could easily solve this. Check the description to see if this has changed, but as of time of filming, this thing just eats turds. Oh no. Oops. No, oh god. The turd is in there. The, the, turd, the turd is in there. Please check the description to see if this has changed, because I am one of the first people in the world to try this vacuum. It's almost certainly going to be updated to improve its functionality, and it's one of the only Robovacs I have ever tried that doesn't eat cables. It, it actually does an awesome job of not eating cables, and this might be a bigger deal to you if you don't have pets. The EasyViz RS2 is a fantastic option if you don't want to spend the extra £500 on a Roborock. And in some cases, it might actually work better for many people anyway, thanks to its larger storage tank and better cable avoidance. If you don't have pet feces to spread around the house, and you don't have hardwood floors on the other side of carpeted areas, then this is quite possibly the best vacuum I've reviewed. On a two hour charge, you will get 300 square meters of cleaning out of its 5,200 milliamp battery. And between the security drone functionality, the very cool spinny mop design, and the ability to compete with vacuums 500 pounds more expensive, this is the best bang for buck vac and dock on the market right now. And you would not regret buying one. As usual, there are links in the description if you want to pick one up. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That will tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people running up your screen are my patrons from Patreon. Without them, I would not be doing this for a living. I would be doing something else. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. Last time your wife yelled at you and you shit yourself.
didn't. <laughs> you know, the depressing thing is, I really like this hair. I might just start wearing this wig all my life. That's... Hair transplant time.